Hello, everyone, and welcome to our final class session for writing Wikipedia articles. It's uh, it's great to see everyone here. It's been a really busy week, um, both in the class and uh, and for me uh, elsewhere. Um, as some of you uh, maybe have seen, I uh, I was able to publish a. Uh, a column about Wikipedia in USA Today, which is, I think, the largest circulation traditional U newspaper in the U.S., or one of them, um, and uh, and also a website called ZocaloPublicSquare.org. So that's been kind of exciting for me. Uh, the the main point was to help uh, help sort of people in the in the general public understand that Wikipedia is something to be valued and something to pay a little attention to. So hopefully that's a, a message that is not new to anyone in this class by now. I think uh, it's you're all well past the point of of, uh, of who I was trying to speak to in that piece. Uh, but that's just me. And uh, during the week there was also a ton of activity in the class. Uh, I see lots of students were uh, working on their final project and leaving notes on our talk page. We had several students published blog posts as we had put in the extra credit for last week. Uh, so it's been really, really exciting and gratifying to see. Um, I, I was especially pleased to see in those blog posts people talking about the specific things uh, that you've learned in the course. Um, because it's always, you know, we of course we know what we're trying to teach, but it's, uh, it's always refreshing to see what's getting through. And sometimes uh, the things that are most meaningful to you as students are not necessarily the things we anticipated. So, uh, so thank you very much for those of you who provided feedback in a blog post, uh, and and those of you who provide feedback in any number of other ways on the Etherpad and with your questions in class uh, and on the talk page. It's been it's been really a great pleasure to engage with all of you uh, in this course. So uh, I, I have uh, I, I put a section in our Etherpad this week um, for those blog posts, and I pasted the three blog posts that uh, that have been listed on our talk page there, as well as my own uh, my own piece. If you've done something either on a blog or on um, on social media, uh, a Facebook post or something like that, if it's public, uh, please feel free to put a link there as well. Uh, I think. I think uh, it will be enjoyable for everyone to see what uh, what your fellow classmates are, are saying about the course. Um, so anyway, this session is really the least structured of any of the sessions. Um, we uh, we generally find that by the time we get to week six, that people are generating lots of their own questions. Uh, you certainly have been in the last few sessions. Uh, and the, the main point this week is really just to um, take care of anything that might be holding you back from getting your final project completed. Um, we would very much like to look at some of the final projects that, uh, that students are working on or have completed. And uh, so we will uh, we'll, we'll certainly take a look at a few of those, and um, and I think just in more than more so than we have in the last few weeks. Essentially, this the whole session will be more like the discussion sessions of the past week. So please add your questions, comments, ideas to the uh, to the Etherpad, um, and we will go through those uh, as we need. We'll still take our regular uh, long break at the end of the first hour, and we might. Uh, fit another break in there as well. And I think um, let's also try to come up with a few little uh, projects where we can uh, take a break from talking to each other and do something on Wikipedia. Uh, it, one of the things that I've been noticing is that um, lots of you are doing a great job of starting discussions. And in some cases, uh, those discussions haven't really gone very far because there might not be a lot of people uh, watching the articles. So maybe we can take some time during class uh, this week to, to follow up on some of those on wiki discussions. So Glenn, I see you're saying you made the mistake of submitting an old article as a good article. 
it was the first article you did on Wikipedia, and it looks like it might get taken down. Well, that is uh, that that's unfortunate. Um, do you want to put a link to that in the chat window here or on the Etherpad? And uh, maybe we can just start off by taking a look at that. Okay. Yes, uh, I, I see in the chat window that we're talking about the Etherpad. So um, I have been, especially these last few weeks since we've been more actively taking questions on the Etherpad, uh, I've been going back a few days after each class and adding those questions, sometimes with additional answers that I wasn't able to get to in class, onto that class's page. So I guess before we look at Glenn's example, let me just pull that up on the screen so I can show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to look, I'm going to pull up last week's page, the week five page, and scroll down. So you'll see there are, uh, we have some detailed notes. Uh, which mostly were pulled from the Etherpad on Max Klein's presentation and then on Dan Cook's presentation below that. Uh, below that, I, uh, there a couple of people had uh, put links to some of the videos that we talked about of past guests that we've had in the class. Uh, so we've got links to those on the section called Bonus Videos. Again, that comes from the Etherpad. And then the questions and answers from the Etherpad. And you'll see for these, I, I put a bullet point for each question. Some of these uh, I have I have not added an answer to. Uh, some of them, uh, people had taken notes on the answer that I, I put in class, and on some of them I actually have, have added a, an answer as I was transcribing them. Um, if there is a question on here that I didn't get to and you still want the answer, please just bring it up this week on the Etherpad, uh, and we'll, we'll get back to it. I, um, it, it, I think it would take me, it would be a full-time job just to, to get to every single question that comes up. So uh, I assume that if there's one that gets left behind that that, uh, that someone will bring it up again. I'm, I'm very happy to do that. So, uh, so Glenn, I see you have pasted your article, so let's take a look. The French, the French Counts of Saint-Hubert, Saskatchewan. So, uh, I don't remember seeing this article, Glenn. Um, I'm sorry to say. So, I'm, so we're all looking at it for the first time. It looks like a very extensive article. Um, I am I am seeing a lot of text and a lot of references. So, to me, my my initial impression is that I, I wouldn't think this is something that is subject to deletion. But let's let's see what you encounter. So, I'm going to look on the talk page. And I see here that you nominated it as a good article, but it did not meet the good article criteria. So let's look on the review page. Actually, before we go there, let's uh, let's just take a, a further look on this talk page. Um, so I see you talk about a, a paper that presumably is the main source that you used for writing this. Um, and then I see some some classes from the earlier Wikisu session, the first time you took the course. And in the GA review, uh, so the GA review is uh, is actually, this is commonly done actually. Uh, we don't actually need to click into it here because it is uh, included at the bottom of this, this page. So I see, uh, I'm just going to scan through this quickly. I see a number of uh, bits of feedback. The lead needs to be expanded for an article of this length. Uh, it should be three or four paragraphs. That makes sense to me. Uh, copyright licensing needs to be worked out for the Sneets article. So that's something we can look at if you'd like. Um, uh, what does this section have to do with the subject of the article? So there might be sort of a, a continuity question in the article. Um, it looks like that's for, for a couple of the sections. Uh, the reviewer brought that up. There are many examples of unencyclopedic, unencyclopedic wording in the article. So phrases like, one must look back to the last quarter, uh, and they apparently agreed, says who. So um, th this is, this is uh, not an uncommon kind of critique, I think, that you'll, that you'll see in this kind of review. 
that um, a, a kind of writing that might be considered normal and very good for something like a, a newspaper article or an academic article um, is, is not really considered appropriate for Wikipedia and you need to kind of adjust the way that you're approaching the subject. Um, Glenn, I know you've been at this for a while, so this may be stuff that you're very familiar with by now, but um, you know, just so that, that everyone following along uh, can kind of see what's going on. Um, so I see also extensive work is needed on referencing. So um, you can, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just continue through and, and uh, I don't want to get stuck on any one section yet. Um, Peter? Dead links in the references, yes? Have you enlarged your, your font at all? Oh, no, I have not. Thank you. Sorry about that. So let's see, where was I? So is that a little easier to see? Yeah, that's a little better, thanks. Okay. Um, so I, I, I see what you mean, that this this does seem like a, uh, a, a rather strong uh, so there's, there's, there are a lot of significant bits of criticism here, but I don't see that this person has um, suggested deleting the article. Uh, the overall here, uh, I can see a lot of work has been put into it, more is needed before it's of GA status. Um, but this is, this is not, so if you, Glenn, if you have an impression that, that someone thinks the article needs to be deleted, I'm not seeing anything for that, unless there's something I'm, Unless there was a discussion elsewhere that I haven't seen, um, is that is, is there something I'm missing there, Glenn? Or okay, so the copyright concern gave you pause. So let's so let's see. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with just what that is. Uh, I see you said you said you had a letter of permission. Um, I'm going to click back into the article and let maybe you can guide me to the place where this is most, um, where this comes up. So I, I don't know exactly what this original letter that was the basis for the article is. Um, could you maybe, Glenn, do you have a microphone? Can you speak to us or could you, uh, could you tell us a little bit more in the chat window if not? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, yeah this was uh, actually, <laughs> the guy that wrote this was a, uh, it was a newspaper article initially, and then he expanded it into an academic paper is a buddy of mine. Uh, this is the the area I'm from, actually. So, but he had written a book about this after the after history, and he's a history major, so he's an authoritative. Um, I took initially to start this article. I took uh, reference the the newspaper article that was published about this um, this group, and then as I said, I when I when I first started the article, I was required to submit have Larry actually Larry Smeets submit a letter of permission to use as material and that was provided which is why the why the article s stuck I guess in the first place and then uh, lots of other people sort of got interested in it you'll see that there's a, uh, a Saskatchewan historical uh, group that's that kind of got a hold of this and added quite a bit to it after the fact uh, I did a fair bit of wikification on this page but many other people did uh, additional wikification and added some references to other areas of, of local interest to, to people that are interested in this particular area. So I think that's where they got some of the unrelated topics, I guess. And, and I could see that criticism as being the case. I'm not sure how to, uh, you know, edit this page without <laughs> annoying a bunch of people who did a bunch of good work contributing to this, you know, and uh, uh, it's a... Uh, yeah. That's my concern. I, I, I can see that being a, a bit of a tricky, uh, a tricky situation. Um, I think, how, how well do you know the people who, do you, do you, are you in contact with the people who, with any of the people who've worked on the article or is this all uh, sort of out, outside of your knowledge that they came in and started working on it? I, I suspect that I do know some of them, but I don't know them by their wiki handles. But I, I haven't got any direct connection with anybody. Okay. So, um, I, you know, I think that it might be worthwhile if you can reach out to people privately um, and give them a bit of uh, a bit of context for why you started the article and tell them a bit of what you've what you've learned about Wikipedia since you since you started it. 
um, you know, so that they have some understanding of uh, that that you can kind of help bridge that divide between uh, between what they're looking to do and what Wikipedia is for. Um, it seems to me like you're in a very valuable position to that, uh, you know, to be able to kind of provide some, you know, sort of act as a, a bit of an ambassador uh, on that topic. And one thing that I would uh, urge you to consider is that if there's information that people want to publish that doesn't really fit into Wikipedia's guidelines of, of sourcing or neutral point of view or, or things like that, um, often it, it can really be very beneficial to suggest that people direct some of their energies towards maybe a blog post. Maybe you can, uh, maybe there's a, you know, maybe there's a blog or a newspaper or something that um, that could serve as an outlet for some of that, uh, some of the things that might not really survive in the Wikipedia article. And that might be a way to help people, you know, feel that they're doing something that's, that's valued to sort of uh, use Wikipedia as the place to absorb the really factual, uncontroversial, verifiable information and uh, and have another outlet for for some other ideas. Does that does that make sense? Well, so for example, in this particular article, I'm going through what the GA uh, reviewer said. So any of those spaces that were or or items or issues or topics that they declared were not directly connected, should a person be starting a stub on that and shifting things off to a stub? And uh, I think that's yeah. I think that's a reasonable way to go. Um, the I don't think there's anything like urgently going to happen after the, the good article review. The the person who reviewed the article is not probably likely to come in and and really make radical changes to the article. Um, so I think it's sort of your decision as to um, what kind of course you map out and and you know how how much of your own energy you want to put in. If you want to encourage people to start some stub articles, I think that's a good idea, but they might need a fair amount of guidance from you um, to actually be successful at that. So I, think it's, it's, I, thought this, uh, I thought this was sort of a done deal, so I didn't put it on my list of, uh, of tasks for this particular class, but it looks like there might be a fair bit of work to be done. So. I'm going to have to submit this okay. as my, my class project. Yeah. Well, I think that was so. Since we're just uh, getting started this week, I'd like to move on and take some other questions, Glenn. Um, but if we have some time later in the hour and you want to come back to this, or if you want to, um, you know, come back to it on the on the talk page after the class, uh, I'd be happy to talk through some more possibilities with you. Okay. That's great. Thanks. Sure. Okay. So, Sarah, do you want to prompt me what else is uh, what we should look at next? Well, we have a lot of different topics emerging on the Etherpad. The only one there's a plus one next to right now. I just copied and pasted it into the IM box. Okay. Uh, actually, it's got two plus ones, so it's a good one. It's what do you do if you have conflicting references? And I assume that means okay. how do you handle it if your references give you conflicting information? Or if, I suppose, if your reference gives you one piece of information and someone else's gives them the fuel for the taking the article in a different direction and so forth. What's the correct way to handle that? Okay. Well, yeah, I think there are there are a couple of different things that could refer to. Um, the so uh, and I'll I'll just I'll try to I'll try to take I'll I'll try to talk about a couple of different possibilities. So um, first let's 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 uh, assume that this is about one person doing the research and um, and trying to trying to figure out what the best uh, information is. So if you're if you're working on an article and you've found several sources and you find some conflicting information, how do you go about writing a coherent Wikipedia article that uh, you know what, what do you what do you do to address that? So uh, I think the the first thing you probably want to consider is the the quality of the references in relation to Wikipedia's uh, reliable sources guideline, which uh, I think we've brought up in class before, but this is a, a really a really handy document to look at when you're thinking about the quality of sources, um, and it'll sort of it'll give some. Uh, th this sort of explores the range between something like a personal blog post that might 
uh, almost never be worthwhile as a as a reference for Wikipedia up to uh, uh, um, very rigorous academic study that's widely cited that would be sort of the, the highest quality and sort of and exploring the range in between. Um, so, so one good thing to consider is you might have uh, a mismatch where one publication is uh, doesn't have much of an editorial process and doesn't have uh, a very well established uh, reputation, and uh, so you might be fairly safe to assume that another source that does have a more rigorous uh, ed editorial process is more likely to have the accurate information. Um, another thing that you can do is is simply write the Wikipedia article to account for that uh, that difference. So you might just say explicitly, um, you know, some experts have asserted that uh, blah, 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 and then have a, a footnote to the first reference, you know, while others have contended that blah, 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 and then have a, a footnote to the second reference. And so what you've done there um, is, in, I, I would say, is the most useful thing you could do for the reader is that you, instead of trying to resolve the question, you've exposed what that question is to the reader and put them in a position to be able to draw their own conclusion about it and, and uh, you know, given them some context for looking at the references themselves. Um, I think the, the other uh, possible way this, this question could be taken is if, um, if two people, you know, each have their own references and one is, is trying to make one point and another person is disagreeing with that point and you each have different references that you're trying to uh, to cite. And I think really the, the process is about the same, it's just that you have to have some discussion around that. Um, so that could either be resolved by determining that one of the references is, uh, is considered reliable and the other one is not. Uh, and so you just decide one way or the other and persuade the other person that uh, that your reference is better or concede that their reference is better. Um, or you could work out some text that, uh, you know, like we just discussed, in, in, in incorporates both perspectives and attributes each one to a different reference. Um, so whoever whoever asked or plus one this question, uh, does that does that cover it or is there something I missed? Okay, looks like looks like that did. Sarah, what next? Um, so I'm seeing. Uh, let's see. Harvard Vegan, do students get extra time if needed to finish the articles? Uh, yes, um, there, we, we do uh, encourage you to submit your final project for the badge this week as the course is coming to a close. Um, but certainly if you want to take some extra time uh, and submit it later, that's fine. Um, it, might take, it might take a little while for me to, uh, to get to reviewing the badge if it's, uh, you know, if it's substantially after the course is over. Uh, but uh, but I will certainly get to it. Um, I, I, it's 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 really up to you, I, uh, Maynard. I, I, my my sense is that the work that you've done, um, I, I I would think has has clearly been enough to earn a badge. Um, I think uh, you you published an article from your sandbox recently. I think uh, there was a bit of, um, if I remember right, there was a bit of pushback that uh, someone thought it. Uh, maybe didn't have high enough quality sourcing, but it seemed to me that that was resolved. Um, I, I think it might be kind of similar to what we just looked at with Glenn, where um, you know someone may be looking at it and and not considering it to be uh, the very best example of a Wikipedia article. But that's not the that's not required to earn the badge. All, all we need to do to to earn the badge is to get it up to one of the the medium levels of, uh, of quality, so the, the C class or B class uh, really would be fine. So you may be closer than you think, Maynard. So we, we do have a recurring question. Um, uh, once again, it keeps coming up on the talk page and it's got a plus one on the etherpad. 
Um, I'm still confused about licensing of images. If I own an image and don't care if it's used by others, which license mm -hmm. do I choose? Okay. Very good. So let's. I'm going to pull up. I'm going to go to Wikimedia Commons on my browser, and we'll let's just walk through the image upload um, process. And I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll answer that question in the in the process of uploading an example. So let me bring my font size up. So the first thing you want to do is click upload file. So this is again this is coming from the assumption that this is an image that that you own yourself. Um, and I guess I should also say an image that there wouldn't be a um, sort of a common question about whether you own it. If it's if if you're a if you're a well-known photographer, maybe if you have an image that uh, that's been around for a while and maybe it's been published somewhere else, um, it might be necessary to clearly establish that you really own it. And so I'll come back to that afterwards. But if this is a more typical case uh, where you took a fairly straightforward photo of something, maybe a park in your neighborhood or something like that, um, well, let's let's cover that case first. So I'm going to click upload file and this brings us to this nice upload wizard uh, there's a there's a sort of a cartoon here that walks you through the steps that you may want to look at um, if you are already if you've already absorbed everything that has to tell you you can tell it to skip that step in the future so you don't have to look at the cartoon every time uh, and then click next and you're oh, I'm gonna bring my font size down a little bit because that's looking strange on the screen. Okay. So first you're going to select the media files to share. And I will just choose this one from my drive. So first it's going to take a moment to uh, to upload the file into kind of a buffer. And when it's and you can see there's a progress bar at the bottom here. If you want to you can add several files at the same time, uh, especially if you're for example if you're uploading five or six different photos all from the same event or from the same place, uh, you might want to uh, upload them at the same time and then we can fill in the form for, for them all in the same page. Uh, okay, I've made a bad choice here because this file is already on Commons and it, it noticed that. So let me choose a different one. Uh, let's see, here's my, um, <laughs> This is my kind of random desktop. Okay, this is not a, a file on Commons. So that already uploaded. Uh, it's it's not yet visible. To anyone else, so I'm not going to finish this. This actually isn't a, a, a photo that I own the rights to, but that's okay. I'm just going to skip the last step. And so the first choice you're going to have is going to ask you, is this your own work or is this not your own work? So we're going to choose this is my own work. You can, uh, it's going to pull your username in and and, uh, and give you a sentence that says, I declare, uh, I, the copyright holder of this work, irrevocably grant anyone the right to use this work under a certain license. Uh, if you want to change your name, so maybe I want it to actually just say my name. Strangely, I can't type. Okay, and so this, by default, will choose the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike License version 3.0. That's the the default license that you use when you're submitting text to Wikipedia, um, and it's it's a good one. Uh, but there are some others that you can choose if you prefer. So you can click this button, use a different license if you like, and this gives you three choices. So uh, the Creative Commons suite is nice because it, it divides up the, um, the specific rights that you are and are not granting and the conditions that people can use them under fairly clearly. Um, if you click on the legal code, it will give you a, actually a pretty readable description of this. But just to cover it briefly, Creative Commons attribution is the is the most basic one where the essentially all you're saying is anyone may reuse it for any purpose as long as they attribute you as long as they say this photo 
was taken by so and so. And so that's why it's important to put your name up here how you want it to appear because if a newspaper comes along and decides they want to republish your file, uh, they're going to have to use your name and so they should take your name as you type it in and put that in the caption when they publish it in the newspaper. Um, as I said, the attribution share alike is the, uh, is the default choice. So this one adds the additional requirement that when someone reuses it, like if they put it into a collage, if they, um, if they make a, um, if they make what's called a derivative work where their, their new version of it is something different, that they have to also use exactly the same license that you chose. So uh, generally I just use Creative Commons attribution because the more simple it is, the easier it is for someone to reuse it, uh, but some people prefer to use the share alike. And then uh, the third choice that's presented here is uh, the CC0 waiver. This is something that I tend to use if I really just don't care about an image. If it's something that's very simple, it took no effort on my part to create, uh, I, I want people to be as free as possible to reuse it without having to even bother to, uh, to name me. So sometimes I'll use that one. There are other choices you can use. They're not presented in this upload wizard. Uh, if you want to use a, a different license, the way to do that would be um, actually to click at the top here back to the old form, which is a little more complicated to fill in, but it gives you many more choices. Anyhow, uh, all of this would be a bit different if this is someone else's file. Um, so I'm not going to cover that right now unless people want to come back to it. I think I can come back to that later in the class uh, just so we can get to other questions right now. Um, so do leave a note if you want me to get into cases where you're taking a public domain file or something that someone else has released under a license. But for now, I'm just going to click Next. Here, I'll, I'll put uh, the one that I would usually choose, and I'll click Next. And then you have uh, an option to fill in a title. So this is going to be the file name. Uh, you have to put in some kind of description. It can be pretty straightforward, but the more information you put in there, the better. Uh, if you speak multiple languages, you can add an additional language and put in a description in that other language too, which is really helpful if people want to use this on a different language, Wikipedia. Uh, sometimes you want to adjust the date. Uh, for example, if you scanned a photo, it might be just putting in today's date, but uh, maybe you want to put in the actual date that you took the photo. If it was a year or two ago, you might just type that in. You can click on the calendar and, uh, and choose a date that way. And, uh, and finally, it's, it's really good if you can put in ca a category or two because that will help other people find it. That can be a little bit tricky. You have to sort of guess at the name. But um, for example, if it was a photo of a snail, you might just try typing in snail and it comes up with some choices. Um, and maybe it's a snail shell. And so if you can put in one or two categories, that's very helpful for other people to find it. And then uh, the last step would just be to click Next. I'm not going to do that right now because that would actually publish this image, which is not mine. Uh, but that should upload it. And then once it's uploaded, it, it will give you the code that you paste into the Wikipedia article uh, or, or, a Wik or a user page or wherever on Wikipedia um, to actually pull that image in. So um, that is... Uh, I, I, th I think that answers the basic question. Again, if you want me to go through the, the case of uploading someone else's work, just leave a note in the Etherpad and I will come back to that. Um, I see in the chat window uh, that people are still asking about Andrew's slides from uh, the week four session. And I, I haven't, I've, I sent him an email and I haven't heard back from him. Uh, I, will, I will give him a try again. It's, uh, I'm sure he'll be happy to know that people are still eager for those. I'm not sure what the holdup was. Uh, sometimes he can be very busy with his own class, so uh, I will still see if I can get those done, and I'll put a note on the talk page. If we can get those. I have actually just sent someone? my own request for the computer. Sorry. <laughs> oh, excellent. Thank you. So, who's up next, Sarah? Is that another Me? question for I turned out the question. Sure. I'm just kidding. Um, so that was the most plus one question of all, and it's a little, getting a little harder to read them as people add notes underneath them. But um, uh, Maynard has been coming up with quite a lot of 
questions specific to his own articles. Um, I'm looking for things that are general to everyone. He has asked if the number of site visitors has anything to do with the respect given to an article. And I think it might be interesting to look at that issue, of what the statistics about an article tell us about it. Yeah, so I think this is, um, I think this is a, a question, it looks like this is a question about notability. And um, so I, I think the, the 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 best way to assess a subject's notability is always going to be the general notability guideline, which I'm pulling up. Um, and if you read through this, you'll note it really does not have anything to do with uh, with web traffic. And um, I think there are a few reasons for that. Um, one of them is I I, I think. You know, some topics can be very notable uh, in terms of, like, it might be a topic where there has been a great deal of academic study, uh, but, you know, and, and lots of things have been published about it, but maybe it's just not timely. Maybe it has, has, hasn't even been of particular public interest ever since the Internet was started. You know, for instance, a, uh, an influential uh, author in a certain field from the 1920s, uh, there might not be a lot of web traffic about that person, but they might be perfectly notable by the amount of attention that they have gotten from uh, independent, high-quality sources. Um, but then something may get a ton of web traffic, but not get any kind of critical um, critical coverage in media or in academic publications or things like that. Uh, and something there there are certainly cases like that where if you follow the topic, it, 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 it seems like, well, of course this is notable because a lot of people are paying attention to it. Um, but that that core, uh, as, actually, as, as you'll remember, the, uh, the Wikipedia, uh, one, of, one of the Wikipedia's five pillars, verifiability, um, makes it very clear that having something, having facts be, be verifiable um, in, in high, high quality sources is really fundamental to what Wikipedia is. So uh, I, it, it's certainly an area where, where uh, it can be frustrating uh, to work on something like that. I think uh, in most of those cases, it's probably a better use of your time to work towards having more traditional publications cover the topic, um, you know, maybe uh, reaching out to reporters or academics in the field or something. Um, and persuading them to put things up that can later be used as source material for Wikipedia, um, than to than to try to to uh, persuade people that it's notable when it's in a in a gray area. Um, the so so Maynard, I see you're, you're you're really intent on the on the visits to the article itself. I mean, they really they they're they're very that is very much not a part of the notability guideline. Uh, I think it can be a useful thing to look at in making your own determination for how much interest there is in a topic, but it's not something that's going to be persuasive to other Wikipedians about whether the, the topic is notable. Um, so I would really focus those energies on, on really the quality of the sources that you're using for the article. But I think this issue of verifiability of um, references is definitely very important. So another question that's come up um, is surrounding what exactly is this. We haven't talked about this very much, I don't think, is the issue of namespaces. So oh, yeah. asking about the special contributions namespace and what exactly that is. Ah, uh, OK. So, uh, yeah, so this, so let me see. I'm going to pull up namespaces. So special, <laughs> I guess, as you might know by, uh, uh, imagine from its name, is not technically a namespace. It's a, it's a, it's sort of a fake namespace that collects some useful tools. Uh, but first, let's look at what is a namespace. And I'll come back to the special concept. 
Um, so Wikipedia, of course, has a page about namespaces, and there's this handy uh, chart that lists uh, lists all the different namespaces. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'll just, I'll talk through a few of those, and you can see down here at the at the bottom there are these virtual namespaces, and special is one of those. So uh, the important ones, of course, are the main space. So this is uh, this is any space that does not have if the title of a page does not have something uh, with a colon at the end of it, at the, uh, for the, the beginning of the title, then it's a part of Wikipedia, the Wikipedia's body of work. It, it's in the main namespace. Uh, if it's in any other namespace, it's going to have something like this. It's going to have a word followed by a colon before the name of the, of the page. Uh, so every Wikipedia article, of course, has a talk page, so that's going to be the word talk, colon, and then the name of the article. And that's true of all of the talk namespaces. You'll see that every every one of these namespaces has an associated talk namespace. So that's going to be, you, you're going to get to that by going to the talk tab immediately to the right of the article title, as I'm sure you're familiar by now. Um, user is one of the first that we looked at. So this is where people put their user pages uh, to uh, to describe who you are and what you're doing on Wikipedia. And then Wikipedia is uh, is the namespace, is, is probably the probably the most important one apart from the article, the main article space, because that's where all of the policy documents live. Uh, that's where all the decision processes or many decision processes uh, for instance, electing people to be an administrator, or um, you might have encountered something called a request for comment, uh, which is like when, when there's a significant dispute, especially if it's something that affects lots and lots of articles. Uh, one example is it used to be that um, people would link the date. Every time a date was mentioned in Wikipedia, they would create links. Um, so it would, if it said like February 19th, 2014, there would be a link for February 14th to the, the page about all the stuff that's ever happened on February 19th, and then 2014 uh, it was the article about that year. And there were some reasons, there were some sort of peculiar reasons for doing that, but they were kind of technical about where Wikipedia was at that point, and they became kind of obsolete. So there was a big discussion, and that happened at, it was Wikipedia colon RFC for request for comment slash dates or date links or something like that. So that's the kind of thing that you might find in the Wikipedia namespace. The file namespace is for photos and audio files and uh, and videos. Typically, those things are hosted on Wikimedia Commons. There are some special cases where they're hosted on Wikipedia. Uh, and um, I'm going to just skip a couple. We've talked about templates a little bit, which is when you want to pull something in to an article to multiple different articles that has the same look. Um, there's the help namespace that has uh, lots of help pages that'll um, you can you can read all about these features, it, especially if you weren't able to take a class like this. That would be one of your primary ways of learning about Wikipedia. Uh, and categories, uh, all articles should be categorized so that uh, it, that's the, the category namespace. Here, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Every article has this box at the bottom. This one we're looking at right now is uh, it's a Wikipedia information page. So if we click on this, that's going to go to something in the category namespace, and it's the Wikipedia information pages. So you'll see all of the first, uh, you'll see all of the different pages that are Wikipedia information pages. And you might see subcategories as well. This one doesn't seem to have subcategories, but before you see the actual pages, you might see a section above this that's, uh, that's categories within the category. So, um, okay, so I'm going to come back to the original question was about the special namespace. Let's click on special here and see what it has to say. Um, so special pages, they have no wiki text, but they're generated by the software. So um, special user contributions, I think, is the one that was brought up. And uh, that's, so that's, it's, it's really more of a software feature than it's an actual page uh, in Wikipedia. Um, but if you try typing special, uh, you'll see that there some suggestions come up, and this might give you a bit of a, a sense of 
what you can find on Wikipedia. So if we click on special all pages, this is a list of all the pages on Wikipedia. It's in alphabetical order. So it starts off with things uh, with, the, with an exclamation point at the beginning. And if we scrolled way down, we start to get to things with a quotation mark at the beginning. Um, and user contributions is, uh, let's see, is there space in there? I don't know why this isn't coming up. Um, I, I don't, it's, it's spelled somehow differently. Uh, but we've all seen these where you, you see, uh, so for my own, I'm going to click here and, oh, okay, I, I put a capital, it should have been lowercase. So uh, this is the, the list of all of my contributions. So uh, does that answer the question? <laughs> kind of lost, okay. Um, so Peter, as I'm, as I'm listening, I'm just remembering how how long it took me to wrap my head around the idea of the different namespaces. It really is a very, yeah. it's a very confusing thing at first. And the way that you get used to it is by watching the URL and seeing where you are in Wikipedia. So when yeah. you're, if you go into, so if Pete makes his text even larger, we can see his URL. And you can see as he shifts from an article into, say, his own contributions, you can see the namespace change. And that's yeah, you why can see it in the URL, and you can also see it in the article title, which might be, especially on my screen right now, is probably a little more visible. Um, so right now we're in the help namespace. For, for me personally, like a, that, that is divorced from context, so it's easier for me to see it in the URL. But yes, I, I take your point that yeah. it's much larger. Okay. So that would be the last bit of the URL right there. Right. So, and I, I can't really, I can't easily, when I increase my font size, it, it increases what's in the page, but not what's in the address bar. So it's not easy for me to make that more visible for you, but hopefully you can see where I am in the URL right now. Yeah, and then and I am, um, so points out that it's just like picture. During the metaphor of folders on the computer. So if you're used to watching paying attention to into which folder you've gone. It looks just the same as that. So most of the time when we're working on articles, we're in article space and it'll just say Wikipedia colon. But then when we switch over to, well, for example, our class pages are not in article space. The URL for our class pages are in what's called education pages. Um, and so that's why it can be tricky to Actually, the, most of them, them most of them are in the Wikipedia space and just the one main page. Oh yeah, that's right. Confusingly yeah. enough yeah. is in the education pages. Right. Um, we moved them. <laughs> too confusing, but you'll eventually come to a point where you're linking between the different the different namespaces, and links aren't working. You're not understanding why, and just previewing your your saves when you realize that that's what you're doing will help you figure out how to get between the different namespaces. It will make sense eventually. I think this does remind me of one other point I should cover is that there are the shortened forms for a few of the common ones. So WP colon is just a short, you see it even pre-fills here. It says Wikipedia, it's the same thing. Uh, and if I put T colon, that's short for talk. So um, like if I wanted to go to the talk page for open educational, open educational, oh, well, okay, this is making me, Okay. Well, I, I guess uh, so. WT. Okay. I guess I'm I'm wrong there. So I'm just I'm just making it more confusing. But it is important with the with WP is an important one to know because a lot of times, especially as you're getting a little more familiar with Wikipedia, um, you can just guess at the title of a shortcut, and often you'll find it. So if you've heard someone bring up the word diff and you don't remember what a diff is, you might just try typing in WP colon diff. And that will bring you to a page. It, it, it brings you, and that redirects you from the Wikipedia namespace to the help namespace. Um, but that it, it brings you right to the um, to that page, and then you you have the shortcut that you just found is listed over here. So, um, I so I see we're we're getting near the end of the first hour. Um, I would like to, um, I. I I think before I take more questions, uh, and, and please do keep them coming because we'll have plenty of time to get back to them, 
uh, I would like to pull up the uh, the class talk page, and um, I want to I want to just bring up a couple of things. And here's what I have in mind: is um, instead of the usual 30 minute or 20 minutes break, I think we should take a 30 minute break. Uh, and I'm I'm going to step away from the computer for for some of that time. But I'm going to suggest that we all uh, do a little bit of that we that we that we engage in a little bit of discussion on some of the articles that people have been working on. So I want to just I, I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom to see the most uh, the most recent uh, uh, comments. The very most recent one here is uh, is actually not from anyone in our class, but um, for people who are organizing uh, the Wikimania conference, which is going to be a huge conference about Wikipedia in London this summer. So uh, they, there's, uh, I think they bring up an interesting point for discussion here. And if any of you have responses to that, I think it would be wonderful to give them, uh, to give them a little feedback. Um, above that, we have a, a couple posts where people talk about their blog posts. If you read someone's blog post and you like it, maybe leave a little note and let them know. Um, one thing that I in particular, I don't. I'm, I'm having a hard time finding it here, but I know that there have been several things brought up on the Open Educational Resources talk page. So I'm going to just pull that up. One thing that um, that really comes to mind for me is that um, our guest last week, Max Klein had a very insightful, specific suggestion for this article. Actually, before we look at the talk page, let, let me pull up the article. Uh, you may remember he talked about the various sections in the article, and he observed that the initiatives section is by far the longest, that it really takes up a lot of space in the article, and, um, and that it might not really be very useful to a general reader to have a um, you know, to have all of these different specific OER projects listed as in a, in a general article about the subject. So I think this is something that it might be good to bring up as a suggestion on the talk page. I don't think anyone has yet done that. Um, there are some other ideas here, though, uh, which, which it would be great to see a little more discussion about. I, I think it would be great if someone could bring that up as a suggestion on the talk page and maybe just uh, just just give it a try, uh, actually starting a separate article about open educational resources initiatives and linking out to that. If we, if we do that in the space of this class, um, it's, and, and it's, I mean, I know that this is something that's, that might be a little unfamiliar. Um, so if we do it today while we're all together, uh, we'll have a chance to come back at it and kind of make sure that it's, that it's done in a clean way. Um, so this might be a really good time uh, if you're looking to try something new on Wikipedia, to try that out together, and we can actually uh, we can actually get something significant done. So I hope that I hope that makes sense. I, we still have about seven minutes to chat before uh, before going to the break. So uh, if anyone has any follow-on questions about that before the break, uh, why don't you bring them up? Or if we have another quick topic we want to talk about, um, we can do that too. Sarah, any thoughts about what's coming up on the Etherpad or which, what we should talk about before the break? Hi. Um, Hi. I was just uh, noticing some stray text at the top of the OER talk page, which I was getting distracted by. Um, I do not have a question at hand. Okay. Oops, I just realized I had turned off my talk button. Um, yeah, I think I is think it one good of practice our... for photos to always have captions. That's an that's an easy one. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's it's it, it's it's best to have a um, a caption for a photo. It's there are certainly times where it doesn't really matter if you have uh, if you have like a biography article and there's just one sort of generic photo of the person. Uh, and especially if you don't know when or where it was taken, there might not really be any reason to have a caption. But um, but if you do know a little information about the photo, it's it's great to put that in. Um, I think actually this is another like 
images are another great question for the Open Educational Resources article. Uh, you'll see it's it's not a very heavily illustrated article. This I think is is true of many many uh, articles that are that are kind of about general topics. But if you have any ideas about what might be useful illustrations, maybe a diagram or something. Um, it might be worthwhile even just to make a suggestion on the talk page, even if you're not a graphic designer and you don't know how to make it yourself. Sometimes just an idea is a good thing to suggest. Um, I'll, I'm going to pull up the open access page because I happen to know that there's a um, there's a good uh, there's a there's a diagram right at the top of that one. Um, oh, interesting. This I think is going to change. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the MOOC article. So this diagram right here in the upper right conveys a lot of information about MOOCs in a visual format. And you know maybe there's something along those lines that we could do for the OER article. Um, another thing I, I want to point out, um, I have been I've been really interested myself lately in uh, in finding videos to upload to Wikipedia. Uh, there's been a lot of interest in getting video content onto articles. So I've actually I'm going to go back to Wikimedia Commons and I'm going to type in category open educational resources. Yeah. Uh, and there are there are a few. Bi I've I've uploaded some videos lately. Um, let's see, where's the one that I there's there's one that I just uploaded and I created captions for. Uh, there's more on here than I had realized. So I'm going to find this a different way. Uh, I'm going to go to contributions and then because this is my demo account, I'm going to just change the URL. Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, so this is a, you. You might be interested to just watch this video at some point. It, this is this is a bit of an instructional video that tells tells educators how to create an open educational resource. Um, one of the things I did with this, if you play it on your own computer, uh, let's be sure this link goes into the Etherpad. Um, you'll see that there are captions available. I'm gonna. It, it might not come up automatically, but you need to click this CC button, and that will let you choose. Um, that'll let you choose uh, subtitles, and it'll also let you add subtitles. So if you if you wanted to um, translate these into another language, uh, you'll be able to see. I, I I started off with the English captions, which I pulled from a file that they had, and um, and that gives you this. Format, and then you can copy and paste this into Google Translate, get a basic translation, and then um, and then create a a captions file for like Spanish or something like that. So this is this gets a little bit technical. This might be a kind of a more complicated project, but it can be a great kind of thing to do to help uh, different language Wikipedia's all share the same information. At any rate, once we have some videos like this, it might be worth considering whether, like, should this video be included somewhere on the OER page? I don't know. I don't, you know, I, I, uh, I don't really have a, a strong opinion on that. Um, but it, it might be something to bring up on the talk page, or just try putting it on the article and see what other people think of it. Uh, okay, so I've, I think I've lost you. I see Jade is asking, "Where am I?" <laughs> so I'm looking at this page. I'm going to paste this into the Etherpad right now. Uh, under, let's see, under URLs mentioned, this is uh, down at the bottom of this under the blog posts for students section. So I think someone still has their uh, their microphone on. We're hearing some typing. Um, anyway, we are right at the one hour mark. So uh, 
I'm, I'm going to suggest that we go to break, but just to, but before we do that, just to come back to my earlier suggestion, uh, if you if you have a little if you want to take a little time during the break, we'll take we'll take 30 minutes. Um, if you want to take a little bit of time to go to anything from the class discussion page, you can either leave a comment uh, responding to someone else on the class dis discussion page or follow any of the articles that your fellow students have been working on um, and leave some commentary there. Um, you could also go to our um, go to our uh, our course homepage and look at the let's see I, I have such a hard time sometimes talking and clicking at the same time. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, but if you go to our course homepage and scroll down to the list of students and projects, you'll find the projects that people have um, have taken on. And you can go to those. Actually, it's it, they're not linked uh, if you haven't added, your, added yourself as a user, but or as a reviewer. But you can just copy that out and um, and paste it into the the search box, and you can offer some feedback on your fellow students' articles too, if you like. Um, and then certainly the Open Educational Resources article, if you want to look at that one, um, I would love to see a little bit more discussion there, uh, and even maybe breaking off that initiative section. So uh, let's head into the break. I see that we have some people who are uh, not able to stay with us past the, the break. So Kelsey, thank you for your, for your participation. And uh, anyone who's not able to stay with us, and please do stay in touch on the Course Talk page uh, going forward. And if you continue to work on your articles, we'd love to hear about it. So we'll see you at half past the hour. Okay, so welcome back everyone. Seems like that break went really fast. I got a, a little bit of a break and a little bit of time to review what people have been up to. So um, I'm, I'm going to start off with a, a quick response to something from the chat window here. Uh, Maynard is asking about the choice to move an article from the sandbox into the article space. Um, and I, I want to comment on this. This is there there. A few of you who I have urged to do so, um, and and you have done so, and it's uh, and I think you've encountered a little bit of a little bit of difficulty in that move. So I want to I want to comment on why I made that suggestion, and uh, I I'm I'm sorry if it's been uh, if if there's been sort of unexpected pushback on that. Um, the the purpose. Uh, the, the the reason why I've I've urged you to do that within the the space of this course is because one of the really important things about Wikipedia is 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 getting a sense for how to deal with um, with other people who who you're not in a structured course with. So while I've been you know very happy to uh, take questions in the class and offer feedback on your edits. Uh, the reality of Wikipedia is that a lot of the people that you encounter will not um, take as much time to explain things. Sometimes they might be um, they might be very opinionated, even though their opinions don't have much to do with Wikipedia policy. Uh, so it, you will, you'll you'll need to navigate some of these issues on your own, or at least know how to uh, to look for help. Um, if you're if you're continuing to work on Wikipedia articles outside of the structure of the course, so um, I, I think it's a it, it, in the cases where I've urged people to do that, um, it's and and if if I wasn't clear enough about this, I'm 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 sorry. I 
what 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 I was seeing was was a lot of very detailed work going into uh, articles in the sandbox, and uh, I I was concerned that at whatever point you do move it into article space, um, you might get you might get some pushback. You might find that people don't think it's in the scope of Wikipedia or certain things about it um, aren't aren't you know aren't fitting uh, the idea of what a Wikipedia article should be and. Uh, to my thinking, it's uh, it's it's important to find that out as early as possible, um, so that you don't find yourself in a position of getting very attached to the article, looking one way, and then find that 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 won't stick once you do move it uh, into Wikipedia space. So, um, I, I in 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 one case, I suggested a student do that, and then and there were there were a lot of um, there are a lot of empty sections that haven't been filled in yet, and uh, when it's when it's published on Wikipedia, that's actually not something. That's something that uh, those those section headers might get deleted if they don't exist yet. Um, and so this may be a bit disruptive to the way that you're uh, that you're approaching your work. So um, I think this is going to be. Anytime you're working on an article, this is going to be an important thing for you to think about, and there's there's never a definite answer of when is the right time to move it to main space. It's always going to be your choice. Uh, but I do think it's important to to recognize that because Wikipedia is such a broadly collaborative project, um, it's 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 very likely that you'll run into people who have different opinions and and sometimes the sooner you can get some feedback, the better. it's it is always a good idea to have at least a core of an idea. You want to get past that initial notability threshold um, before you publish on Wikipedia, before you publish in the main space. Um, but once you do, you you might find that there are uh, a lot of different opinions about what direction the article should go. So um, I, I think that's that's all I want to say about that in the in a general sense. But uh, but. Please, if you if you find that that you're having difficulty with that, um, please do continue to put notes on the class talk page, and I will try to help you through any of those issues as best I can. Um, that that's going to be always a balance of. In some cases, I might be urging other people to give you a bit more of a chance. In other cases, I might be uh, trying to explain to you how uh, how you might need to adjust your thinking if it's going to stay on Wikipedia. So, um, you know, it's it's. Uh, it, it can be a complex area, and uh, I, I, I hope that the introduction that we've given you here will give you some tools to understand uh, what you see. So I hope that I hope that addresses your question. Um, I'd, I'd like to move on to a general suggestion. Uh, if you have follow-ups on that or other questions, we will come back to that. But one thing I want to suggest in in past rounds of the course, I think, Jade, it might have been you that originally suggested this. Um, in the last two rounds of the course, we had a, uh, a reunion after the, a couple weeks after the course had ended, where we all came back and, uh, and people who had continued working on articles got to share their work again. And I think those were really uh, useful sessions. So I'd like to suggest that we do that again, um, and especially since this is the final Time that uh, that Sarah and I have have planned to have the course at least under the grant that we're currently working under. Uh, it'd be nice to uh, throw that invitation open to all past students as well. Um, and so what I'm thinking it, it might be good to do is have a day that we set aside. Since some of our students are in time zones where th this time isn't good, um, here's 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 my suggestion. Um, that we would have that we would designate a day, two specific times of the day. So uh, for me in the Pacific time zone, one that's uh, that's early in the morning, and then one that's in the evening, as this is. And depending on your time zone, you might be able to participate in either one or both of those. And um, and I think for that session, we will uh, publish a, a, a list of a few. Uh, open educational resources related articles that we specifically want to work on. So we'll make them a little bit more of a working session. We will uh, certainly take a look at, at whatever articles have been people have been working on, 
but let's try to make this um, a bit like a virtual edit-a-thon. Uh, I don't know if, if you've encountered the concept of an edit-a-thon before. These are generally in-person events, uh, sometimes hosted at a library or something like that, where people are encouraged to come and work on Wikipedia together and all bring their own laptops and, um, and maybe reference materials and work on articles together. And I think it would be really fun to try that um, in an online context. So I don't have uh, an exact, I, I, I think it'll be a little bit of a, a hybrid between the way that we've done class and something that's less structured and just gives people time to work on things. But I'll, I'll refine that idea a little bit and put up a page on Wikipedia um, and I'll be sure to email that out to everyone. So I'm, th I'm thinking that, that we'll, we'll announce what those articles are a little bit ahead of time. So if people want to work on the articles ahead of time and get some discussion going uh, and gather some reference materials, that, uh, that might be useful. And then we'll also be sure to build in a little bit of time to explore the articles that people have been working on uh, separately from that. So um, I'm seeing some, some positive feedback on that in the in the chat window. I'm glad that resonates with people. Um, I, I think the, the natural time to do it, I think we should, we should certainly do one at the, the class time that we've been doing uh, because we know that that has been working for everyone in the course currently. So we'll probably do one where, where this is the second of two sessions and we'll have one that's about, um, about eight or ten hours earlier as well. Um, and so let's do that. I, I would suggest that we do that in two weeks, um, which we'll put it at about, I'm not looking at a calendar right now, but I think that'll be about the 14th of April. And, uh, and again, I'll, I'll send out emails so that everyone knows the exact time. Um, okay, well, that's yeah, great. I, I love to see the enthusiasm about open, openness in education. That's great. Okay, 14th is a Monday, so it would be the, the Tuesday. I guess that'll be, uh, that might be a challenging day for some of us in the U.S. as that is tax day, but um, I, think, uh, I, I, think, I think we're going to just need to work around that because um, pushing it out any further than that is going to be kind of a problem uh, on our end as we're wrapping up this, this grant. So, um, so let's go back to the, I'm going to go back to the Etherpad see what kinds of questions have been coming up. Is there anyone who would like to talk about some discussions that have come up uh, during the break? Somebody just activated their microphone. Is there, Tara, is that you? You got a comment? It, yes, it is. I, I, I just had a couple of ideas to throw out if no one had anything to say. Please go ahead. Um. <clears throat> Maynard has raised the question of um, whether and when to note categories in articles, which I don't think is something we've talked about much in this class. Also, Luis volunteered to show his article that he's working on. The, the thing is that that article is in Spanish, so we, we may not we may not understand it. Well, I think Luis, if you have a microphone. Um, and can kind of talk us through it and, and describe what we're looking at, I would be very happy to do that. Um, if you don't, I think it'll be a little bit difficult for us to look at a Spanish article together because uh, it'll be a little too hard for me to, um, to see what we're looking at. I will, I'm, I'm going to pull this up on the screen uh, so we can at least all get a, get a, a quick visual look at it. And uh, if you do have a microphone, let me know and, and we'll... Um, I'll let you walk us through it. Um, I, I will talk about categories a bit in a moment. Let me come back to that after this if, uh, if Luis is able to. Okay. So it looks like you've put a great deal of effort in. This is a very long article. Um, oh, I see. I'm looking at the, no, I'm looking at the Spanish one. Okay. So I'm looking at the Spanish one and I have actually uh, chosen in the, the languages link, I've actually chosen to have the Spanish Wikipedia display the navigation in English, which is a nice option. Uh, this is actually a fairly new feature on Wikipedia. So even though we're looking at Spanish Wikipedia, I see page and discussion and, and things like that. Uh, I'm going to look at uh, the view history tab. 
and I see Luisa's name going all the way back. So it looks like, I don't know if this goes back to the beginning. Did you create this article from the beginning, Luis? Yes, this has been. Can you hear me? Yes, there seems to be a little bit of background noise, but I think I think it's fine. Okay. Well, uh, the article is, is about um, an important architect from my uh, city. Um, and the part, the the thing um, that is most most uh, particular about this art architect is that he 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 didn't study uh, architecture. He he was an an empiric architect. Um, and a lot of buildings, churches, and other um, uh, constructions in in Aguascalientes. Uh, he he uh, uh, um, he designed the the the, the buildings the buildings um, and, and, and the photo, photographs of, of these articles. Um, uh, most well, most most, uh, most of all are are mine. Uh, I have uploaded to the Wikimedia Commons. Uh, so, uh, because uh, uh, there wasn't uh, a lot before I started the article, and that's uh, all that I have to say. Okay. Well, once again, I'm 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 very impressed with all the work that you've done on this article. Um, I may uh, I will. Yeah, if you submit this for the badge, uh, what I will do is uh, I'll I'll run it through Google Translate so that I can, um, so that I can read it more easily, and uh, I'll probably also see if I can find a Spanish-speaking Wikipedian who can uh, who can review it as well. Uh, so I really look forward to to looking into that. Uh, I wonder if you might be able to comment on the um, on the images that you use. Is this are these images that were already available? On Wikimedia Commons that you found, or did you upload them? Okay, so Luis is telling us that he uploaded almost all the images. Well, that's great. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to know that you were able to, to figure that out and, uh, and get through the licensing and everything. I know that can be a bit of a challenge. And I'm going to just, I'm going to page through the article one page at a time. I hope this is uh, not too fast to show up on everyone's browser, but at least this way we can all get a look at the really impressive quantity of text and images that you have put together here. I can see you put a, a great deal of work into this. Now, are any of these photos that you took? I'm seeing something that looks like a more recent photo of the of, of any of the, the buildings. Or are they just uh, images that you found and that were available under a free license? I'm, I'm going to talk to explain. Um, Okay. Um, I I live in Aguascalientes, so I I I uh, I just took my my camera. I I love to take pictures and and I uploaded uh, almost all the all the pictures that I that I took with my camera and 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 I don't know if uh, it could be an an issue about the the. The copyright or something, but I don't think so because uh, uh, the 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 buildings are, the buildings are uh, are uh, a monument are uh, and, and and a lot of people uh, could or can uh, upload the 
the, the photos that that they see, they they took with the camera, their own cameras. Okay. Well, let me um, let me bring up one point that can sometimes be an issue with copyright uh, with with photos of buildings. Um, and I don't know uh, in this case. Um, I I I don't know the I don't know the laws of Mexico, um, but there there's the uh, here I'm gonna so we're on Wikimedia Commons and I'm gonna pull up a page um, called F it's F O P is the abbreviation for Freedom of Panorama. Um, so this is when you take a photo of a building. In some countries, the copyright of the architect uh, is is considered to that. In, in some countries, it's considered that if you take a photo of the building, that it's not in the public domain, or you don't have all of the rights to it yourself to release. Um, that you would need to get a release from the architect themselves. Um, in other countries, that's not the case. If it's a publicly visible building. Um, you're considered to have the rights to it uh, entirely yourself. So um, I'm, uh, there's this this map of European countries at the top of the article, and then if we go down, we can actually click. You see a list of all countries, and I'm going to click on Mexico, and this tells us. Okay, so this tells us it's okay. So I think. Um, in general, taking photos of buildings in Mexico, you have the right to release those under whatever license that you want to. And there's obviously there's a great deal of detail here. Uh, this this page is really to I, I think one of the great triumphs of Wikimedia Commons. I don't think there's any page any place on the internet that you could go to get as much detailed information about the copyright law uh, as it relates to buildings anywhere on the internet. <laughs> Um, so this may be a, a useful resource for other people uh, if you're if you're looking at uploading photos of buildings. Um, but I'm I'm glad to see that uh, that this will probably not be an issue for you. And so uh, yeah, if it's if if it's your photo and there is no other issue like that, then you can certainly upload under any license that you choose. And it looks like you've chosen the Creative Commons share alike attribution share alike. Uh, license probably in the upload wizard, so this is great. Uh, let me. So the next question was about categories, and categories exist on Wikimedia Commons and also on uh, on Wikipedia. It's uh, there. It's a similar concept, but there are different uh, collections of categories. Wikimedia Commons, of course, is a multilingual project. The categories are generally named in English, um, but in some cases they're uh, you know, you might have slightly different category names because it's intended for a multilingual audience. Um, in this case, I see a number of different categories on this on this photo. So I, I don't know, Luis, if you were able to figure out how to add all those categories yourself, or if someone else came along and added them. Um, I'm going um, to go back. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, I created the categories. I I I check other pictures, other. Images on Wikimedia Commons. I saw the the code, and I I I create uh, uh, especially the the refugee ranges the refugee ranges rivers category. Uh, it's 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 one I I create. So um, and and also it's it's linked on the article on on the on the bottom of the article, there's a, a link of about this this category. Pete, are you talking with your mic off? Thank you. <laughs> Yes, I was talking with my mic off. So, um, yeah, I'd like to point out something that I think uh, you've, you've really you've, you've figured out a lot of uh, things about how this fits together. Uh, this is I'm very impressed. Uh, but here's here's one additional thing you could do. You may remember Max Klein in our last class talking a little bit about the Wikidata project and how it connects different Wikipedia's. 
So let's. So I see there's nothing in the lower left here. Um, there there are no links here. So I'm going to click on Add Links. So I'm I'm in the the category that Luis created on Wikimedia Commons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in ES for Spanish, uh, Espanol, and the page that I'm going to link link to has the same title, right? Um, I believe. I don't know if there are any accent marks or anything because I don't know if that auto-filled. It looks like it's not finding the article. I'm going to click link and see what happens here. So it says it has been successfully linked. So I'm going to close the dialog and reload the page. And hopefully we will see that show up in the lower left. Yes, so in Wikipedia, we now have a link to Espanol. And if we click on that, it should take us to the article that, yes, there we go. And so if you were then, if, if, if you wrote a version of this for English, um, then we could do the same thing, and you can add the links from anywhere. You can. This is a. If, if we click add links on Spanish Wikipedia or on Commons, they all go to the same place. This is going on to the uh, Wikidata project, and so it'll keep all of those pages tied together. Uh, I think Luis was saying that he had linked to the category in Commons, and I'm going to guess that you did that at the bottom of the article. Yes. Okay. So here. So you did put a, a link manually here at the bottom, which which goes to that category. So that's excellent. Um, and also one thing uh, that you might want to do is, uh, I, I, I know it's much easier for you to work in Spanish, but if, if you felt that it was important to have um, even a basic article in English, you might think about just taking this lead section that you've written and translating that into English and starting an English language version. Of course, it would be important to make sure that you have uh, enough references uh, to to demonstrate that he's notable on the English language version. Um, it looks like you have about seven footnotes here in this lead section, so that probably would be fine. Um, and it's okay if they're in Spanish. Uh, it would be best if you had at least a couple of good sources in the English language as well. Um, but this is something that you might try. Um, I, it's, I, I, if you do try it, you might want to be prepared for the possibility that someone would object if there are no English language uh, references. So I wouldn't put a whole lot of work into it until you've kind of established that, uh, that people think it passes the English language notability criteria. But I think it would be a, an interesting thing to try and very worthwhile if, uh, if it does stick on Wikipedia because then uh, you have a lot more people seeing the article and learning about this guy. So good work. I'm, I'm very impressed. And as um, someone else has posted a link to their article and is requesting feedback. Okay. Um, I think it was you, so I'm not, I can't remember. I put it on my clipboard and then moved away. Okay, well, oh, I am yeah. seeing one from Griso, uh, but I think this is, this is uh, about copyright in, uh, in Mexico or in the oh, one I, guess I just this is, pasted yeah. is the one that's on the Etherpad. Okay. Ah, very good. Okay. So this has been your final project, Guiso. Okay, great. So do you have a microphone? Do you want to talk us through this a little bit? Or shall I go through myself? Don't have a mic. Okay. Well, I will watch the chat window. So please uh, tell us a little bit about the article, and I will give some observations uh, as you get to that. So again, I'm seeing uh, a really extensive article. Again, my I'm my my first reaction is that I'm very impressed. Uh, we get down here to the references section, and I see oh my, 38 references. <laughs> very impressive. So um, let's see what can we what can we learn here. Let's it's a very short lead section, so let's just I'll just read this out loud. Francisco Prestes Maia was a Brazilian architect, civil engineer, urban planner, and professor who served three terms as mayor of the city of Sao Paulo. So we have a, a similar 
similar topic here, but in the English language Wikipedia. So <clears throat> it looks like you also have found uh, a number of images. Did you take any of these photos yourself? Or are these just images that you found uh, found on Commons or found online? Most okay. You say most of the sources are in Portuguese, so let's take a look. Um, I'm, I'm just scanning through to see if I see any in English, uh, and looks like maybe reference number ten here. Looks like it's in English. And maybe that's maybe that's all. Uh, so this is something I I don't personally I have not uh, I have not worked on a lot of multilingual articles on Wikipedia. Um, my understanding of English Wikipedia policy is that it's fine to use sources in other languages, um, especially now that we have tools like Google Translate that make it possible for people to look at something online and uh, get a sense for the reference even if they don't speak the language. Uh, that makes it certainly much more, uh, much easier to, to deal with that situation. Um, I don't really know where the, um, sort of what the current thinking is on English Wikipedia if there are, if there's sort of a level where there's an expectation that a certain number of the references would be in English. So. Um, I think it's a good sign that you were able to publish this, and as far as I can tell, nobody has objected. Let me just look at the page history to see. Maybe you can tell us how long this has been in the main space. I don't know if you started in a sandbox. Oh, I see Maynard has been jumping in here. Excellent. Well, we moved tonight, I believe. Oh, you just moved it oh, just sorry, tonight? Okay. The wrong one. Oh, no, you put this in the main space early on. Okay, very good. So let's look at the talk page. Um, okay, so you put an explanation there of what you're doing, but haven't had any any responses yet. Um, I would suggest that that you should find a wiki project to add this to. Um, one thing that comes to mind again, this is not my uh, you know this is not the kind of article that I have worked on a great deal, but I would imagine there is probably a very active wiki project architecture. So let's just try typing in WP colon architecture. And I see there it's coming up with some suggestions. So I'll click right here and see if that's actually a wiki project. And there it is, wiki project architecture. So I'm, my screen is a little messed up. There we go. So, um, you might, uh, one, one way to add it to the wiki project is you could just look at one of these other articles that they have on their main page here. Like, so let's click on the Roman Baths article. And if we go to this article's talk page, you see that this has a tag for, well, that's actually a good article tag, but if we go down, it's wiki project archeology span here. And so if we click edit on this, first section, we can find the code that was used to add it to Wiki Project Architecture. And that is buried in here, this line right here. So, uh, Griso, you, you would want to copy this line and you would probably want to delete the, you definitely delete the part that says GA because your article has not been through the good article process. Uh, and probably just delete the importance part as well. Um, and then I would just copy that part and put it at the top of the talk page of your article. So this will put a similar tag on the article and if people are actively looking in Wiki Project Arch Arch Architecture, they may notice your article. Another thing, that after you do that, you might want to go to that Wiki Project page. Let's see. So here, here we are again at the Wiki Project page, and then click on Talk. So this is the talk page for this Wiki Project, and you could click New Section. I'm logged in under my account, so this plus button will show up as New Section on yours. Um, I'm not on my demo account, so it looks a little different. 
and then you can leave a comment there. So you might say, uh, I just wrote this you know, subject or headline. You might put the title of the article and just say, I've written this new article about an architect and I am interested in feedback. So uh, for some wiki projects, you'll find that this is, that you get a very quick response and for others you get, uh, you might never get a response. Um, one way to, to, to get a sense for what to expect is just to look at how recent uh, the comments on the talk pages are. So I, I just went down to the bottom of the talk page for Wiki Project Architecture, and I'm just looking at the dates. So I see one from 11 days ago. I see another comment from 19 days ago. A couple of those people have t been talking back and forth. So that's a good sign. It's not just that people have left a comment and nobody has responded, but they're actually going back and forth. So I would say there's a good chance that someone will see this if you leave a note here and um, and we'll probably come along and, and have some good feedback for you. Okay, Can so. Can people just be bold and add their article to projects? Certainly, yes. Um, adding, adding an article to a project is, uh, something that I don't think you would ever get in trouble for. It's uh, if you're, you know, if a, if an article uh, falls within a certain topic, like this one clearly does, uh, I think the people in that wiki project would only be happy to see something else brought to their attention. Uh, let's, let's have a look again at the main page for wiki project architecture. I'm going to look for the assessment. Um, Okay, so they have this article assessment link here. So this is this is about halfway down the the page. So I think we looked at these grids uh, for another wiki project earlier on, and this will give you a sense of how many articles are within or are of interest to wiki project architecture. Um, so the the quality ratings go down to stubs. So these first. Um, Oh, I don't know, seven lines or so. These are all of the, the main articles. The rest are sort of unusual ones, lists and categories and things like that. And then if we scroll down just a little more, you'll see the total number of articles that have been assessed by the project is almost 30,000. So uh, you can see by adding one more article to it, uh, certainly no one is going to be, <laughs> um, is, is going to be worried that there are too many articles in this wiki project, uh, people are, 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 are generally happy to have all the articles that have something to do with articles, architecture, collected in one place. Um, if you want to uh, fill in either of those sections that we, that, where it had a uh, good article and uh, the importance listed, uh, you can certainly do that. Uh, for importance, I would just give it uh, your best guess as to how important it is within the field of architecture. Um, you need to use the exact word, and so you can see what the words are for importance here. It's typically, it's going to be top, is going to be the very most important articles to that field. So in architecture, there are 424 of those. So very few of the articles will be considered top importance, high importance, mid importance, or low importance. Usually on the wiki projects, pages, you will find some description of how they define importance for that project. Um, probably by clicking on this link, we could get to that. But you don't really need to worry about it. If you assess it at mid-importance and someone else thinks it's at low importance, they'll probably just change it. Or maybe they won't bother. It's not, it's not really a big deal. Um, this is just, uh, just sort of a way for people to wrap their heads around the, uh, the content overall looked at by the project. Um, and then again, for the quality assessment, it's fine to give your article a, um, you know, this is, this is just my opinion, other people might differ, but I would say start, stub, or C class, uh, it's fine to just say what you think the article is. I would say that this article is very clearly, I mean, I haven't read it yet, so it could be that you're, uh, you know, that maybe there's some non-neutral language in there or something like that, so I could be wrong, <clears throat> but, my guess is it's probably at least C class. And I would say it's probably between C and B class. So um, you can certainly put start class, no one will ever object to that, and you might put C class as well. And if someone does disagree, then that really would just be an opportunity for a discussion. It's not like you're gonna get in trouble about it. So, um, 
so this is the kind of thing I could just I could just keep going on about this. There's there's so much uh, that we could say about any one of these articles, but I would rather make sure that we're getting to everyone's questions. So Sarah, do you, is there anything else I can turn my attention to from the Etherpad? Hi. Um, there's so many on there. I started putting little yellow X's to the left of those we haven't looked at yet. Um, for someone who has submitted their user page for their signature badge, not quite. I'm not quite sure about that one. I, I think the the correct answer to this question is that you can submit as many final projects as you want, <laughs> but I'm not sure you can submit a user page as a final project. Pete, do you have a comment on that? Uh, that talk button. Yes. So, yes, that's that's correct. Um, the user page itself is not the 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 course is about writing a Wikipedia article, not just your user page. So, uh, as we've worked on user pages, that's been mainly a, just a way to get used to editing Wikipedia and kind of introduce yourself to your fellow Wikipedians. <clears throat> um, but uh, if you, if you have if you've if you've already submitted it, I haven't uh, just recently looked at the badge submissions, so uh, my apologies. I have seen a few come in, and my apologies if people are waiting uh, for feedback. I will be getting to that very soon. Um, I think if if you submitted a user page and you're working on a project, that's probably something that I'll just bring up in discussion if I see that submission, um, and we can work through that. Um, it may be, uh, for some of you, you may have submitted or be thinking about submitting your project when you're not done working on the article, but it, it may be that what you've done on the article already is plenty to earn the badge. So, um, you know, for example, if you have a vision for your article that it would have seven sections and that it would be, you know, have 50 references and things like that. And all you've done so far is write the intro section and one or two other sections and maybe uploaded a photo. Maybe you only have five or 10 references in there so far. Uh, please go ahead and submit that for the badge because that is very likely a, uh, a, a C-class article and, uh, and we'll be very, very happy to award the badge to you. And you should continue to work on the article. You should continue to pursue your vision for the article uh, for as long as you like. But you shouldn't let that hold you back from uh, from submitting and, and earning the badge at this point. Okay, so Minnie just oh, maybe you just covered this. I was going to say just clarified that the article is actually in in sandbox, not user page. Okay. So right, yeah, I, I see that. I'm misunderstanding that. So yes, so to submit the article uh, for your badge, you should first move it into the main space of Wikipedia. Um, if you have uh, if, if if you have um, concerns around that, uh, bring them up now or bring them up on the course talk page. Uh, I don't I don't want to force you to put it into main space before you're ready, but at the same time, it's it, probably we can work through those concerns and it's probably fine. So. Um, so, Minnie, would you uh, would you like to point us to the article in your sandbox? I can pull it up on my screen, and we can look at it and, and consider that now, if you like. Okay. Give us a link. I'm going to just take a moment and look through some of these other questions while you're coming up with that. Okay, I think question number nine is one I would like to come back to, the difference between original research and summarizing research. Uh, okay, and yeah, I see NetherZone had a question about pictures of people, and I will definitely get to that as well. Um, so NetherZone, I know this is, uh, I haven't looked back at your specific issue um, about the older photos that you uploaded earlier. Um, I haven't looked back at that in the last week or so. So I could probably use an update on where that stands. Um, but I can also talk about this in a general way. Okay, so I see Minnie has given us a link, so let's look at this. Come 
Come on, Link. Let's go. There we go. Okay. So let's have a look here. So Lubricin. Oh, okay. So this is this is a scientific I've, I, I've seen that you were working on this article um, but I, okay so I, I am a little bit confused because you had listed I think this article PRG4 which is already on Wikipedia but now I see so what what's in your sandbox is a separate article so can you clarify is this something that you're suggesting as an update to the PRG4 article or is this a separate article that would be supplementary and no I, I don't say it's badly done I, I don't think it's badly done at all it's there may be room for improvement but um, I can tell you've put a fair amount of work into this So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm finding myself. I, I just, I don't have very much of a scientific background. So, okay. So it is a separate article from a different standpoint. Okay. So I think uh, let's let's explore a bit what that different standpoint is, um, because there are, there are, um, there are a couple of different things you could mean by that. If if what you mean is that it's um, that it's like a different point of view about a topic that has some controversy. Um, typically, those really sh that should be a part of the same article on Wikipedia. Um, Wikipedia is, it doesn't really aim to have separate articles about the same topic. But if this is sort of a subtopic, um, then then we should be looking at how to fit it in. How to like what section we should link to your article from uh, within the PRG4 article and how to how to have them link to each other. Yes, please do. Uh, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the article I'm writing yes, now is about a protein, but the article that's already on Wikipedia is uh, a part of uh, a genome project that somebody else did. It's just a stub article. So it's talking about different things, but the content talks about both the protein and gene. So I don't exactly know if I have to make another article or just keep editing this to fit in both topics in the same article. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So uh, I, let me just see if I'm understanding you. Is Your article would be the more general topic, actually, and the one that exists yeah. is more specific. OK. Oh, fascinating. OK. So um, I think that, so <clears throat> the thing that is giving me a little bit of pause is that your article has bolded uh, PRG4, which is the same title as the existing article has. So it may yeah. be that if yours is the more general topic, it may be that actually this article really should be moved to a name that is more specific uh, to kind of make room for your article. Is that how you would? Yeah, that was yeah. my concern too. Okay. Uh, because they only talk about the gene and it was really part of a large project, but instead I wanted to make a general article, so. Uh-huh. Okay. So um, I think that what you're describing is, uh, my, my impression is that you're very much doing the right thing, uh, that what you're aiming for is, uh, is, is very valuable to the coverage of this topic, um, but it's a little bit technically complicated. And uh, I'm not sure that I'm really qualified as, as someone who doesn't have much of a background in science to tell you exactly what to do. Um, okay. But I would, I the sciences in general, let, let me just say this, the sciences in general have very active, very collegial wiki projects. So 
I would think that this is probably wiki project biology, or actually it looks like there's a more wiki project molecular and cellular biology uh, yeah. is listed on this page. So I would very strongly encourage you uh, to go to this wiki project and go to the uh, and then go to its talk page here. And uh, leave, I've, uh, I've tried that, but okay. I don't see many people active on uh -huh. exactly the topic I want to work on, so it's not yeah. really helping. Okay. So um, another possibility might be uh, to go to a more general wiki project. So it, so let's try WP Biology, mm -hmm. um, which probably has a more active group of people working on it. Um, so if we just if we click on this talk page, uh, I see a comment from four days ago. I see a comment from eight days ago. So this looks like it might be a little bit more active. So. Uh, maybe leaving a leaving a message here would get a little bit more response. Okay, I will so, try that. I, I think the um, I think the the first step that will make everything easier is if you can get some consensus around what would be the ideal title for this existing article. So if you can, it, 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 I, I don't know if it's clear what that title should be, but if it's like PRG4 parentheses gene or something like that, um, then yeah, that moving this article better. to that new title, yeah, okay. So so this is what I would do. I would go to Wiki Project Biology and say, I've been working on this article about the protein. There's an existing mm -hmm. article which is more specific, just about the gene, and I think that we should move the existing article to and say exactly what title you think it should be moved to. Uh, and tell them that you're pretty new to Wikipedia and you'll probably have someone uh, come along who just, if, if this is a straightforward, uncontroversial decision, someone will probably just do it for you. Uh, and then okay. at that point you can move your article into the main Wikipedia space. All right, I can do that. Okay, and, and do let us know if you if you don't get much response or if uh, if you encounter some difficulty and I'll, I'll try to help you through uh, in more detail if that doesn't if that doesn't work out. Sure, sure, I'll do that. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of our our time. Uh, let me just uh, I want to I want to come back to we I had talked about the Open Educational Resources article, and I want to see. Um, I want to look at that talk page and see, uh, I did see one comment from a student in there which I replied to. Um, so Luis uh, had brought up this article about critical pedagogy, um, which I think is, oh I see, yes, and we have, we have a question about images to come back to as well, Sarah's reminding me. Um, so uh, I think uh, I'll leave this aside, but, but do please take a look at this, there, there's some several interesting uh, points being brought up on the Open Educational Resources page. So after the class, if you have some time to come and look at some of these topics and respond to them, I think the people bringing up the, the topics would be very happy to have a bit of, uh, a bit of response. Um, so yes, so there was a question about images that I would like to, uh, that I'd like to come back to. So I talked earlier about um, copyright as it relates to buildings. And so Netherzone asks about the um, what happens when you take a photo of a person. And there are uh, let's I'm going to bring our I'm going to bring my browser back to Wikimedia Commons uh, because there there's a similar so I talked about freedom of panorama which is about the copyright of the that the architect might have over the building itself. And there's a similar issue which in in law the general term is personality rights. So, this is the, the general page about that. And I'll tell you, uh, this is an area that is kind of controversial within Commons these days about what are the, uh, the proper rules to follow around uh, taking a photo of someone else. As far as the law is concerned, again, it varies from one country to another. 
Um, but in the United States, and I think in most countries, uh, it's considered that if you take a photograph of someone uh, in a public place, which, uh, and, and, and I'll come back to the definition of that. If you take a, a, a if you take a picture of someone in a public place or where there's no reasonable expectation of privacy, that you don't need their permission. So, for example, if you're at a, a concert or if you're, um, you know, in a downtown city area and you see a famous person and you take a photo of them or something like that, um, for the most part, you do not need to get their explicit permission. Uh, this may not be true in all countries. Uh, so if you're if you're not in the U.S., uh, you may want to look at this page closely. And I think there's also I think this also has a, a list of countries. Maybe it doesn't. Um, but if you if you if you start on this page and uh, and look around on Commons, uh, you'll you'll find some specific information about different countries' laws. Uh, the other consideration, of course, is if you're not in a public place, if you're in, if, if, uh, say if you're friends with a famous author and you take a photo of them in their home, uh, in a case like that, it would be important to have their permission and the way that you, so you still own the copyright to the photo. So personality rights are separate from copyright. You still need to release the photo under a free license to upload it to Commons. But in addition to that, um, you would need to establish that this person has, has given you permission. Now, the, the policy on commons doesn't require you to do that in any specific way. So it's when you upload the, the photo in the description, if you say, this person told me that it's fine to widely distribute this photograph, that's, that's all you have to do. Um, it, it, it can be, it's, uh, there, there may be a change to this policy in the future. Um, there have certainly been cases where people have been, uh, you know, offended by the way that a photo has been used after it's been uploaded or something. Maybe they had in mind that it was fine to put it on Wikipedia, but they didn't think about the possibility someone might download it and use it on a different site or on a different Wikipedia article. So this is an area that can be um, a little bit controversial in Wikipedia. But I think that's a, a good uh, general introduction. And if you have specific questions, feel free to bring them up on the on the talk page. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. And yes. And there is there's there's this. <laughs> so you're, uh, now there's one you're asking about the the email address. If if you want the person to actually send uh, an email that can be kept in a database documenting their permission. That is the best way to go about it in most cases. And I've actually, I've looked for this address on the fly before and I have failed to come up with it. So um, I'm gonna try again quickly, but if I don't, I will just make sure to add this to the class page afterwards. Um, I believe under the, the contact us link, I think there are several options here. Um, And yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have to follow up with this. Uh, I believe, yeah, I'm, I, 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 it's I believe you can just do permissions. I'm gonna type this in permissions at wikimedia.org. I believe will go into the system correctly, and uh, the volunteers who watch that email account will then sort it into the appropriate. Uh, folder and everything in the in the software. So I think that if you don't know the address, I think you can just use that one. I, actually, if it's in English language, permissions dash e n. Is uh, yeah, and then okay. So as you can see, there are several different email addresses, and yeah, permissions dash commons may be the right one. I I always lose track a little bit um, because I deal with several of them. So. Um, I will post a better link in the in the class page, uh, but if you don't find that, feel free to just use one of these, and I think someone will make sure it ends up in the right place. Okay. So, and another zone. Uh, just once again, I know that you uh, you had a, a rather complex uh, situation there. So, like I said, I haven't looked back at those emails. Uh, in the last week or so. 
So uh, I, I will take another look at that and feel free to um, to send me a note if uh, if you're still stuck with that, or maybe I'll be able to figure out where you're stuck and uh, and tell you the next best step. Okay. So let's see, we are at, right at the end of our time. So uh, I will very much look forward to seeing everyone's submissions of your final project. Uh, if you if you feel like you haven't gotten to the point where you have a final project to submit, uh, please do at least apply for the WikiSU Signature badge. You'll find instructions for that on our uh, on the week six class page. And uh, and even if you don't apply for that, at least uh, leave us a note on the talk page and let us know your thoughts as you're finishing up the course and what you're working on and what you might be interested in continuing with. It's been really a, a fantastic group. I think you've all had excellent projects and excellent questions and uh, really enjoyed working with you. Sarah, you want to jump on and have anything to say before we wrap up? Yeah, I'll, I will just echo echo Pete's sentiments. It's really been a pleasure working with all of you. And you've definitely been our most engaged group of students, so that's been a real pleasure. Please do continue to stay in touch using the talk page and feel free to contact us or me, certainly, on my talk page. And, and um, don't don't take too long finishing your final projects because if you wait too long, you will lose interest. <laughs> There's a chance you may, but we'll let you know for sure about the reunion, and um, we'll look forward to chatting with you then. So good luck. All right, thanks everybody, and we will hopefully see you all in a couple of weeks. Bye bye.